So we're going to take these uh, reciprocal graphs one step further by transforming them via a translation. So what you've got to recognise when trying to draw one of these graphs, it is important to think about where the asymptotes have moved. In fact, that makes it a whole lot easier for you. So if the graph has been moved up uh, 10, so you've added 10 to the right-hand side, okay, to the y values, then what's going to happen is that if you have an asymptote at the x-axis, then it too will move up 10 units. So if we can go about drawing the asymptotes first, then we can draw our graph around it. So for number one, we've got y equals 2 over x plus 3. Now we know what y equals 2 over x looks like. So we're going to be adding 3, so we're going to be moving the graph up. So first of all, think about what y equals 2 over x would look like. y equals 2 over x has a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis, and it has a vertical asymptote at the y-axis. Now, if you move the whole graph three units up, the asymptote of the y-axis will just move with it, okay? And that won't really change. The one at the x-axis, however, will move up three units as well. So if we put in a dotted line to represent that asymptote, okay? then we know that the curve will look something like this. And it will be approaching y equals 3 and approaching the y-axis. And down here, it must approach the y-axis, but also approach the y equals 3 from that direction. So at some point, the curve must cross the x-axis. Now, we could determine that point by putting y is equal to 0. So we could say, well, 0 equals 2 over x plus 3. Subtract the 3 from both sides. Multiply up. Then divide both sides by the minus 3. So this point must be minus 2 thirds. And that is what y equals 2 over x plus 3 must look like. OK, so that's the first one. So number 2, y is equal to 3 over x minus 2. Now, we know what 3 over x looks like. When we replace the x with x minus 2, that translates the curve 2 to the right. So we had a horizontal asymptote, which just moves to the right, will still remain a horizontal. The vertical asymptote at the y-axis will move 2 to the right. Okay, So we need to draw that one in. So the one at the y-axis will move 2 to the right. And that's x equals 2. So the curve should look something like this, approaching x equals 2, and then approaching the uh, x-axis, and then likewise approaching x equals 2, and then approaching the x-axis from that direction. So at some point, this curve must cross the x-axis, oh sorry, the y-axis. So we can substitute x is 0 into this, to find out where. So we get 3 over 0 minus 2. So minus 3 halves. And that's your y coordinate. OK, let's keep going. So that's number 2. Number 3. Number 3, we've got y is equal to 4 over x plus 3 minus 5. So we now have both a uh, translation in the y direction, so it's moving down 5, 
and the x plus 3 means it's moving three steps to the left. So both of the asymptotes are moving position. So we've got the minus 5 moving the, uh, the horizontal asymptote down 5 units. And we've got the x plus 3, so moving the vertical asymptote, asymptote 3 to the left. Like so. Now, we know that the curve must um, approach both of these asymptotes. So the curve down in this section must look like this. But... Up here, we need to be a little bit more careful. Now, does the curve cross the x-axis to the left or to the right of the y-axis? Does the curve cross the y-axis above or below the x-axis? So before we draw in this secondary part of the curve, we need to think about solving that. So when y is 0, this will tell us where it's crossing the x-axis. We get 0 is equal to 4 over, sorry, x plus 3 minus 5. So add the 5 to both sides. Multiply up. Divide both sides by, well, what would be easiest here? Let's multiply out the bracket. 5x plus 15 equals 4. Take the 15 from both sides, so we'd have uh, minus 11, and then divide both sides by 5, so minus 11 fifths. So it definitely crosses the x-axis to the left of the y-axis. So we can infer from that that the curve must come through and cross the y-axis below the x-axis as well. So this will be my minus 11 fifths. But where is it crossing the y-axis? Well, for that, I can put x equals 0. So y is equal to 4 over 0 plus 3 minus 5. So 4 thirds minus 5. Now 5 is 15 thirds. So we're going to get minus 11 thirds. So it crosses the x-axis at minus 11 fifths and crosses the y-axis at minus 11 thirds. Okay? And that's what uh, number 3 must look like. OK, so number 4, number 4, we've got 4 over x squared minus 4. So for this one, we've got, we know what 4 over x squared looks like, and we're dropping it down 4 units. So there's a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis, that drops down 4 units as well. So there's y is equal to minus 4. The asymptote at the y-axis maintains where it is. So the curve must do something like that. OK, so looks like it's going into my arrow there. Something like that. OK, so we can clearly see that the curve must cross the x-axis at two points. So that will be when y is 0. So if we put y equals 0, 0 is equal to 4 over x squared minus 4. Add the 4 to both sides, then multiply up, divide both sides by 4, and then square root both sides. So we get minus 1 and plus 1. Okay, 
And that is a sketch of y equals 4 over x squared minus 4. So finally, we've got number 5. Now, number 5 is y is equal to 6 minus 2 over x minus 3 squared. Looks a lot more complicated, this one. But it's a few things we've got to consider. Now, first of all, if I just cover up that 6 and I cover up the minus 3, if we just had minus 2 over x squared, we know what that looks like. That translates the curve 3 to the right. That translates the curve 6 up, so it's positive 6. So, regularly, the curve would have um, an asymptote at the y-axis. It's being translated 3 to the right. So, x equals 3. We ordinarily have an asymptote at the x-axis, but it's being translated up 6. OK. And now, if we think about that minus being in front, then we know that the curve must look something like this. OK. So, for this side, we're all right. Okay, because we've got this one intersection point. But do we know where it's intersecting the x-axis? Is it to the right of the y-axis or to the left? Okay, so we can determine where it's crossing the y-axis by putting x is 0. So if we put x equal to 0, then y is equal to 6 minus 2 over 0 minus 3 squared. So that's 6 take away 2 over, well, minus 3 squared is 9. So 6 take away 2 ninths. So because it's 6 take away 2 ninths, um, 6 is uh, 54 ninths. So that's 52 ninths. So because that's positive, it must be crossing the y-axis up here. So the curve would have to come up like so. Something like that. Mine's not very symmetric, is it? I um, don't know quite how to doctor that. So something a bit more like that. OK, a little bit more symmetric. So that's where it's crossing the y-axis. But I guess that's also a point of interest as well. And also is that. So we need to determine when y is 0. So if we put y is 0, we're going to get 0 equals 6 minus 2 over x minus 3 squared. So if we add the 2 over x minus 3 squared to both sides, we can multiply up. Divide both sides by 6. 2 over 6 is a third. Then you can square root both sides. So plus or minus the square root of a third is x minus 3. And then add 3 to both sides. So that means that this point must be 3 plus the square root of a third. And this point must be 3 minus the square root of a third. And there's your 3. OK? So it should be the same amount either side because it has this line of symmetry at x equals 3.